spirits, our guest masquerades under the name of Iceberg Slim. Many of you remember his story of his days as a procurer, or if you will, a pimp. His prison confinements included solitary in what he called a steel casket. Now he leads a respectable family life. Iceberg Slim has gone straight, and for this reason, he continues to hide his identity. He returns now to tell us about the most incredible con man he ever knew, a blonde-haired, blue-eyed Negro called White Folks. <laughs> You're not putting this on, are you, Slim? No, that's, that's, uh, that's factual. Called White Folks. Uh, how did he get that name? Because of the fact that he could pass over the line, over the color line? Oh, that's right. Uh, white folks uh, was a term applied to him by his friends. Uh, his enemies in the black ghetto called him Trick Baby. Now, a Trick Baby would imply, I believe, that uh, his mother was a prostitute. And that she had had sexual congress with a white man and there had been an accident. How did he uh, respond to, to being called Trick Baby? Oh, the, 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 the Irish... African blood in him would boil up. Irish African blood. Yes. That was a combination. Yes. Right. Tell us a little bit about uh, white folks and how he preyed on people. Uh, well, white folks had a natural uh, talent uh, for the con. And when he met Blue Howard, his mentor. Blue Howard? Blue Howard. May I ask you why he was called Blue Howard? The fact that he was so black. That he was blue? Yes, well, this is a common practice in the ghetto uh, to, to call an extremely black man. By his most prominent characteristic? I see. Go on. And uh, under the aegis of uh, Blue Howard, all of his of white folks' potential as a con man surfaced. And the book uh, is an incredible adventure story of the con as it's played in the street, the verbatim dialogue, what the sucker says and what the con men say, to weave the con spell. Golden Globies, welcome back. It may be the coldest month, but the black... Is it the coldest month? It's, it's, it was cold two days ago, and now it's 45 degrees outside. It was 15 degrees Friday, and we were recording on Sunday, and it's 45 degrees out. That's not natural. Did you hear Griff... Punks at Tiny Phil on Groundhog's Day came out, saw his shadow, and said, we're going to lose 20% of our audience for the next four weeks. <laughs> why do you think that is, Griff? Why do we, Why when we do Black Exploitation Theater Month, we lose about 20% of our audience? Well, I think the obvious answer is right in front of us. 20% of our audience is in Florida. It's not because they're racist. Well, I, I don't think they're racist. I think... Do you think it's because we, because of the the political climate we live in now, where it's like people are thinking, like, should I? Is it okay for me to listen? Should two, first of all, two white guys be talking about this shit? Yeah. And should I listen? Because, because, because you know, because it's funny because the 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 few black listeners that I know we have, they love it. They love. They can't wait for black exploitation theater. They That's, get excited when I announce it. Some of the most enthusiastic folk we have on YouTube, Cotton Comes to Harlem, stuff like that. Yeah. Like gets gets people saying like, "Hell shit, are you guys doing this again next year?" Yeah. So it's like I you don't if like black people are cool with it. I think you can be cool. With it. You can <laughs> listen to it. I mean, because you know why? Because they know we're not. We come at these movies with love and respect we're not shitting on this that's the biggest misnomer about our show is yeah people think we're just negative all the time and we're always shit like, we're not yeah i mean i talked about it recently when i was saying that everyone's talked about a lot of the movies that we've covered and every covered and everything but usually they take it they do the movies in 35 minutes because they just say hey this was really stupid this scene was especially stupid yeah and we fucking go through and we dive into the character we get into the metaphysics we get down to the metadata of the movie well, yeah, trust me, we, we wouldn't be doing... I mean, if we include the Tippy Tats, we've done 300 episodes. Oh, yeah. And we wouldn't be doing it this long if we hated this shit. I mean, yeah, I, obviously we're going to shit on Ginty and Seagal, but that's because you guys love that shit. Those are our most popular episodes. I mean, we love covering them, too. Seagal's yeah. got that perfect level of smugness, whereas he is completely unaware, and then there's Ginty, who's completely aware he's a piece of shit, 
And he goes out there and swishes threes like Larry Bird every fucking movie. And you're just like, what the fuck is wrong with you, Robert Ginty? No, you are not menacing with any object. Chainsaw. You are not a man. Uh, Yeah, no, you are not a man. Yeah, but so, I mean, like, no, we... Who's more pathetic, Ted Cruz or uh, Robert Ginty? Oh, fuck. I know. I gotta go with Ted Cruz because... <sighs> he actually wields power. Yeah, yeah, but the things he does to get that power. Like, I don't even think even Ginty, like, lowers himself. Ginty's just, like, Seagal. He's just delusional. Like, Ginty thinks he's a badass. Ted Cruz is like Gollum. I mean, he's just <laughs> like this, like, he'll do anything for that, that his precious. Oh, yeah. And I gotta go fucking uh, Ted Cruz. Is yeah, Ted Cruz, for sure. Worst. Uh, but, hey, you guys voted for him in Texas. We did. Speaking of con men, though, my topic on hand is going to be con, con artists. Con artists? Well, before we get into that, I I have an announcement I want to make. If anybody wants to make deep fakes of Griff and I fucking anybody or even fucking each other, you have my permission. Do it. Oh, wow. Did you hear that story? What's that? There was a, I think he's a Twitch guy, one of those video game guys. Yeah, yeah. He uh, got busted because he had a tab up on his screen he did some deep fakes of some female, like known, uh, oh, Twitch stars, Twitch or girls yeah. that he he had he had got deep fakes made of them or something. Oh, fucking! I saw that headline. I didn't yeah. know what the fuck it. Yeah, and oh, it was, it was so cringe inducing. I don't know what's worse. Like I can understand the girls being creeped out by that, hundred percent. But everybody else, who, what's it to you? Like this guy, he had, of course he had to do the groveling apology. Yeah. And, and to make matters worse, his poor wife had to be in it. Oh, yeah. His poor, unattractive wife had to be in it. And she's crying because she's probably worried because this is probably their source of income. 100%. Is this fucking thing. So she's probably crying about that. And she's humiliated having to be on this thing. And he's just like, and he's an idiot, as you expect a Twitch guy, he's an idiot. He's just like, oh, this is fucking this. And he's like swearing constantly during his apology. And I was just like, I think I like we don't monetize issues. I, you would never get an apology out of me even for something <laughs> like that. I know. And by the way, like I said, you want Aubra? You want to do <laughs> deep fake Griffin me fucking each other? Go for it. You have my permission. I don't care. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. Uh, my only requirement: I have a thirty-two ways. Make sure that is in there. <laughs> he okay? works hard in that. Way, I work ways. hard on that thirty-two ways. Let's keep it thirty-two. But yeah, I don't like. I don't know what's just cringier: the, the, what he did or the, that he, like. Why does he owe me an apology? Just privately go to those two girls and go, hey, that was creepy of me. That's just a community of like, because so, these people work in such a niche environment that they have to apply to their, so they live in the greatest echo chamber of all. Because these are people that want to actually watch them do nothing but play video games. Yeah, I, I, it boggles my mind. I'm guilty of it. I, I watch I a shit ton of no, Twitch. I, I don't get it. Because it's like, I don't get paying for like. How are we not getting any money? Like we don't have any Patreon. We don't have any of that shit. Well, let's, and then we're like, we can't get people listening to this for free. Yeah. And these shitheads who aren't even interesting are raking in the cash. Like I get it when the 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 halfway attractive girls like fucking play it in like a like a like a bikini or some shit. I get there would be somebody who'd want to see that. Who wants to see the douchebag X? You know, five, six, seven guy do his fucking thing like the big obnoxious personalities i don't get at all that's the most Poot, by the way pootie pie is having a baby everybody and people are really excited you about know that. this how do you know this? because this was trending on twitter today oh okay and i looked at it i said what pootie pie? first of all i just want to say i thought he was made up by south park when they did the south park episode i thought i did not know this was a real person I go, this yeah is and then i was like i found out he's real and he's a millionaire and i was furious yeah and it was just people like literally like I'm crying now because Pootie Pie is having a child. <laughs> They're talking about a man named Pootie Pie. You know, oh, like Twitch streamers to some people are like their new wrestling stars, though. It's like they go there, they interact with them, they feel close to them for whatever reason. Yeah. It's a really interesting world. I find it to I don't be know it's the most. But it's a world. I find it to be the most interesting background noise. That's that's what I like about it, you know? There's not all that many movies on. And well, some... I understand because when you're listening to us, you have to immerse yourself. You can't just put it on the background. No, we're like that hardcore history podcast I love so much. I have to be sitting in front of a speaker old school style, like, you know, the big fucking family radio when you're listening to the bedside fireside chats with the president, Ronnie Reagan. Yeah, in the 80s, we had fireside chats. I know. I, that's yeah. why you're so into the radio. 
Have you heard about, uh, since we're talking about defakes and all this, ChatGBT and all that AI-based stuff is taking off. Everyone's doing their content I about really, it. Can we do that? With, I don't know. How, how does it work? Because I would literally like to see if we could do something with our show on it. But we just... Would you would you give the thing a fucking prompt? file? I don't understand like you. Because I would like it? to see if they could get our voices. Like that would be AI, really, and we I, could just read it on like we could do an episode. We just read it. Like how about we pick a movie we don't want to do, <laughs> but we have so, them do it for us, and we just read the fucking thing. Yeah, I don't know how the fuck works. Uh, I watched you know the one internet etiquette guy. He did an episode based on it where he supposedly had AI write his whole episode, and it looked like he had to prompt it. And then it gave them, you know, jokes or whatever, shit, content, storyline. Uh, but now one of the big things on Twitch right now is, uh, oh, I forget what the channel's called, Nothing Forever. And it is Seinfeld, written by a uh, uh, AI. And so... Is it accurate? Have you read it? Huh? Have you read it? No, you don't read it. You watch it. They play, they make a fucking TV show? It is computer generated, so it's like if you remember the Money for Nothing music video, yeah. it's kind of like those graphics. Okay. And they rename every character, of course. Sometimes they appear, sometimes they don't. But they do like a little, like, you know, they would do a scene in Jerry's apartment for in an actual episode of Seinfeld, and then they would cut to the next scene or whatever. So what they do is they'll have like a scene in somebody's apartment. The jokes never really line up or anything. It never carries on. It's just like a bunch of weird non sequiturs that would fit on a Seinfeld. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of the breakup is just Jerry doing the stand-up like they do at the beginning of the episodes. Okay. And it is weird. Yeah, we need to look into this. I want to see if we can do something with our show with that because that would be funny. Like, <laughs> and it would be scary if it's accurate, like it gets us, like our voices down, like it's yeah. exactly what I would say. Just instead of doing the top half, we just have we just read from the AI. Yeah, let's do All that. I'll do is laugh, so it'll be really funny for me at least. <laughs> yeah. Because we'll, I can't read. It's true. <laughs> yeah, we'll do that, people. We'll look into that. We'll look into that. But con men, like you were saying. Con men. Not all, this is the thing about black exploitation people, not all the fucking movies are funny and fun. So th this, is a, this is a tragic story we're doing. Last year we did a shit ton of tragic stories. Mama's dead. Okay. Yeah. Mama's dead. <laughs> no, 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 no. I don't remember the rest of the words. By the way, if uh, you're new to the show and you don't want to scroll through everything, Griff just put up all our old uh, black exploitation history month episodes on our youtube page just go on globus theater on youtube you'll find it subscribe notify do whatever just don't give us a where where's the movie that's all i ask yeah well you can even tell us it sucks just don't tell us where's the one movie. one person said um you have ruined this movie <laughs> yeah that was for the mac wasn't it <laughs> yeah it was the yeah, mac I saw that. Fuck yeah you, by the way typically what happens is one day after we're done recording me and murray will go look at youtube and then we'll go respond to each one of them with the link <laughs> to the movie right. well, where they can watch they it. We asking you shall receive. Exactly. We're very helpful. We right. don't we don't we're need We're doing to, the work you should be doing. Yeah, we don't need to tell you how wrong you are about uh, us trying to, you know, actually be creative and do shit. We just tell you where the movie's at. Right. Cuz right. clearly you're too afraid to click another link. Right. Well, you just, you're just entitled. You think everything should be for free. And when you don't get it for free, you get angry. That's right. So, all right. Con men. Apparently us. <laughs> yeah, we, we're running the con. Hey, little known fact, we're both half black. <laughs> but we're trick babies. We can pass. That's right. Okay. Iceberg Slim. You know about Iceberg Slim, Griff? I uh, barely know anything. I heard the name in passing. All right. Iceberg Slim was a pimp. A very good pimp, I hear. Uh, there. By the way, if you're interested in Iceberg Slim, there is a very good documentary about him. I believe it's, I'm sure it's on some streaming site for free. Oh, but don't look for it on YouTube because you might not find <laughs> no, it. Don't. If you do, just go. Where is the yeah. fucking thing? Um, it's is he's he uh, he was a pimp for like 20 years. It's weird because he uh, he's a very smart man. I I really highly recommend you look into the the uh, the documentary, which I believe is just called Iceberg Slim something something. <laughs> Because they actually talked to him. He died 30 years ago. But they talked oh, wow. to him uh, uh, 
on it and his wife because he okay he he was a pimp for 20 years went to jail and decided like i'm gonna get my shit together okay and so he like cause he, and, uh, and uh this is the funny thing like because he's a pimp of course he had three daughters and of course it would the karma would give you that yeah but uh you know, he's played it straight. He's got a regular job. And then his his common-law wife, like, she's like, you got to tell these stories of this crazy shit you've seen, you know? That's kind of interesting. The wife was like, hey, yeah, this is a good idea for you. And so he wrote, I think, like five or six books, like, uh, like explaining the street life. Like, I'm, they were all fiction books, but I think he, he pulled a lot from his life and the shitty scene. Like, you might have probably changed some names of some real life people that did that shit. Right. Trick Baby was one of them. Uh, it's So, Trick Baby is actually about our white uh, white folks. Yeah, it's about white oh, folks. Oh, okay, okay. And so, uh, I mean, I don't know. I'm, I kind of have a mixed feelings because, you know, in like, Everyone has this idea of pimps like Dolomite, like these funny, colorful characters. But what pimps are pieces of shit, really. I mean, when you think about it. I mean, I don't. And I, that's what I like. I like about Iceberg Slim is he gives it to you honestly. Yeah. Like, he tells you how it really was. He tells you how fucked up he was, the fucked up shit he did. He doesn't sugarcoat it. He doesn't make ex, ex, you know excuses for what he did. Right. Because it was a weird. He had a weird upbringing. Because from what I learned about him. He went to college. And he's a very smart man. And he, I guess his mother had like a beauty salon where a lot of the pimps and hoes would like hang out. And he oh. fell in love with that world, which I don't understand at all because I've always lived on the periphery of that world. I, like I knew that was a dead end. So like I've been around it my whole life, but I never wanted to get involved with it. So I, I always stayed on the outside. But like I've, I've known people like, people I went to school with who went on to get murdered or kill people or wow. fucking I've had friends that have gone to prison for drug dealing and shit. Okay. So yeah, I mean I've been I've seen that shit and I always realized it was a dead end, so I always stayed away from it. And I was lucky enough that I at least had a stable household. Like I didn't have like drug addicted parents or anything. Yeah, like yeah, that. yeah. So but yeah, so then he got into it and then he took going to prison to get him out of it. And then thankfully he, you know, wised up and went straight. Yeah. But it's funny because he's got a book called Pimp, which a lot it's like a it's like almost like a manual on how to become a pimp. Because <laughs> Ice T, who's got took his name from Iceberg Slim, okay, he said he used it because he like he said he tells you like I mean, it, I mean this is the thing I don't like about like I don't like anybody that uses uh, manipulation or mind games to get what they want in life, men or women, yeah. you know, and that's basically what a pimp is. Yeah, I guess the female version would be like a stripper or something like that, but. It's like he, yeah, he. I mean, I mean, it's very simple. If you, hey, if you guys want to learn how to be a pimp, it's very simple. You just you do basically what a narcissist does in that you find somebody who's vulnerable, right. who feels unloved, right. You make them feel special. You build them up. You get them hooked on you, and then you cut it off. Yeah. It's cold hearted, and then they keep they like a drug addict. They keep chasing after that high that you gave them. You, you're hot and cold with them all the time. Sometimes you're sweet. Sometimes you're sour with them. Yeah, and then you can get them doing anything you want, and that's basically you know. So there you go, people. If you want to pimp out somebody, I just told you how to do it. <laughs> but I, I say don't do that. It's not a nice thing to do. Don't to do that. Not a nice thing. It's not a nice thing to do, people. Right. Just make deep fakes of them fucking. Just make deep fakes, because then it's like you use their identity, or at least their facial identity, but you don't use their actual. You think they were use. more pissed off they didn't get paid for it? Their their deep fakes. I don't know. I think I think you're hitting like uh, just the uncanny valley of like, oh fuck, that's really weird that I'm seeing myself. Yeah, there's gonna in be porn. There's going to be like Marilyn Monroe getting double teamed. Yeah, know, like you know, and, all, and there's gonna be like they're gonna be doing movies like real movies having John Wayne and Marilyn Monroe like in them. They'll just get the rights to them on the estate. That's gonna fucking suck. Yeah, it's gonna all, all well. I mean, shit sucks now, so yeah. it can't get any worse. Yeah, that's true. We'll still be doing the old movies that people like. I'm not. I'm not covering an AI movie. I'm sorry. No, I don't. This future we're heading towards. We need more con people. Wait, we already have them. I mean, that's the thing. That's why I'm. That's why I'm seriously interested. If we can do it, see if we can do our show through that AI thing. Because is it possible? Like, this is 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 can it duplicate human creativity? You know, I don't know. I'm well. No. It hasn't experienced anything. 
It's just taking but, but, from but a bunch is, of but formula. But does that matter? That's the thing. That's the thing. That's in Uncanny Valley. Does it matter? Are we really unique? Are we special in the world? Maybe we're not. And we're going to learn that through AI. That anybody could do what we think only an artist like us can do. Yeah. It'll be interesting. It I will mean, be interesting. I mean, I've seen some a lot of interesting AI art. Like somebody I saw on a YouTube. We will get to Pricked Baby, by the way. Uh, we're not going to do a Quincy episode. It's just an hour of me talking about my boring punk rock stories. But uh, I, somebody took a Slayer song, and it just created images from that Slayer. And it was horrific, hellish images. It looked really cool. Yeah. So it's going to be weird what's going to happen with AI. I mean, of course it's going to be able to churn out some shit. They're like, oh, yeah, that's pretty neat. But at the same time, like, it seems like all art's about is you know the endeavor that got you there. And by the way, all you white collar people, now you're feeling what blue collar people have been feeling for the past forty years. A robot's gonna take your job now. Yeah. How are you gonna feel? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. I've been saying it for a while. I work in automation. I see that shit every day. Trick baby. All right. This is a. Uh, like I said, this is a kind of a, I. This, I liked it because I like bleak shit. So I liked this movie. It was. It was film noir. Do you think? They did a good job of giving you, like, the people you're kind of, like, rooting for, but then also showing you the painful side of the people they fucking ripped off. Well... They they, they play both yeah. sides like that? Well, yeah, that's that's what I appreciate about Iceberg Slim. This is reality. This is real street life. I mean, yeah. look, we all love fucking Rudy Ray Moore, but that's just comedy. Oh, yeah. That's Vince McMahon's version of this. Right. So, got the smiling black man in there telling jokes, smiling, dancing... Getting his nephew off drugs. Well, I mean, I mean, and I understand, like, it's... it. And I, it's I'm more not, marketable that way. Well, it's marketable, and it's also... Especially at the time, I, I understand that it's the power fantasy that downtrodden people have where they're getting one over on the man. I, also, I totally understand the popularity of black exploitation. Yeah. Especially in the 70s. When, oh, yeah. When they were just, just like, all the fucking... Uh, not social justice, but... The social civil rights movement and that kind of shit, you know, yeah. and so I get it and I appreciate it and I, I think it's good, but I also like that this movie is like, this is how it really is. Yeah, there's some really fucking good scenes in here that just show, like, uh, we might pipe in the audio for it, there's a white dinner that happens to take place and fuck tell her like it is, two political sides that are just both like, yeah, we do need to keep them down, we just need to do it for different reasons. Right. So we'll get there eventually, too. Um, but, yeah, we see the painful side. We see how they use it, how, how they use their conning ability in everyday life to get anything they want, ladies, money, cars. You get to see it all. It would have belonged in last year's collection of uh, black exploitation movies as well. Pushers and pimps. No. Yeah. yeah. A little less pushing in this movie, though. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's why I kind of we started out with a silly movie like Black Helix, I didn't want the whole month to be a downer. And we're going to end on a fun movie, too. But okay. in the middle, we're going to have a little grittier shit, which is my preference. Do you but know where they filmed this? Because there's a lot. Philadelphia. It was Philly, okay. Because yeah. it looks rough. Like, there's a lot of just dilapidated buildings, brick buildings and everything. It It's a little reminiscent to some of the places you go to in Detroit still today. Yeah, well, every, yeah, every city, especially a major city, has their rough part of town so yeah i'm sure that's probably where they filmed it right so uh was iceberg always out of philly or i don't think i don't know where i don't remember where he was from i don't think so. i think he was a west coast guy but i could be wrong about okay. that i mean i don't know that's why you guys need to check out the documentary so you can learn <laughs> on your own you do our research exactly. and then tell us on youtube exactly hey if it wasn't for me you wouldn't know about this guy who deep faked Two friends, female friends. Or maybe it's in your news feed or you look at Twitter as well. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. All right. Why don't we get into this movie? Let's head out for that trailer. All right, everybody. On the other side of this trailer, you're going to get some real street knowledge from Iceberg Tim. Get the hell out of here! Where's Blue? Well, should I know? Trick, baby. 
have no relations if it walked up and spit you in the face. Trick Baby, the best-selling novel by Iceberg Slim, hottest black writer in the world today. The real gut story of the ghetto, its bras, its dudes, and high rollers like Blue Howard, the slickest con man of them all. Tonight, I'm drinking to the suckers, God bless their greedy little hearts. Because without them, where would us hustlers be? Trick Baby. Trick Baby. Buddy, touch those rocks and you're dead. You know who sold them the phony rocks? Well, I don't know, Mr. Pirelli, but uh, I think they were colored. Find them for me. Well, what did he do for his share? I tell beautiful lies for my money, Cleo. His white skin gives us a slick edge. I catch the black marks, he catches the hump. I'll have 10,000 in cash, you bring 90,000. You bring it in cash, strictly cash on the table. That's for your protection. I want $5,000. What for? So I don't go to the phone booth and call Nino and tell him how you did the old man. Trick baby. Trick baby. Trick baby. Get away from me, you're a dead man. What do you want more, the money or to keep on breathing? I want both. Well, you can't have both! All right, we are opening up, and we have a man in a holy shirt and a little dilapidated one-room uh, apartment, I guess. Hotel, actually. The It's the uh, uh, $5 sheet hotel from Ex- Executioner. That's right. Yeah, we have uh, like an older black man, probably in his 50s or yeah. his 60s. Full beard. He's wearing the long johns. Looks like me in the wintertime. Yeah, and he's uh, like setting up this scene where he's like, He's got a bag full of cigarette butts he's scattering everywhere. Yeah, and he he puts like some half-eaten sandwiches and like some empty liquor bottles. He's just sitting up. We're like, what's going on with this what shit? Is going- you hear a blood-curdling scream. It must be another woman that has to lay with Robert Ginty. And he didn't even pay for the sheets. He didn't pay she for was, the At sheets. least I could have got fucked on $5 sheets. $5 sheets. Clean sheets. Yeah. She, he didn't give her that. He didn't. That's why we ate Ginty. Your piece of shit, Ginty. That's right. So, all right, and then we go out, and we see this white guy with this older white man. And they are walking with purpose down the sidewalk. Right, and they walk up to this no-tell motel, and they ask for Harvey. And you know, the guy's like, I'm not giving no names away. And he's like, you better, you African-American. He didn't say African-American. This is uh, a character we're going to learn in a second here. His name's Mr. Kelly. He's being very yeah. forceful. He's got perfect quaffed he's, hair. Quaffed? Quaffed? Quaffed. Quaffed. Quaffed? Quaffed. Okay. Yeah, he's very, like we always say, he, he, if you walk, like, like Iron Eagle, he's walking a room like you own the place, people will fucking do what you tell them to God do. Goddamn right. They will not question you. Right. And, I mean, Iron Eagle had great hair too. So, of course, right. that kid got whatever he wanted. Did you notice, I put it up on Twitter and got nothing for it. It was a hilarious observation on Iron Eagle. Sure. A kid, was not seeing a kid, he's wearing a short sleeve denim shirt and he cuffed the short sleeve. Yeah. Never yeah. seen that before. Yeah. I've seen the white trash cigarette pack thing. Where, you know, right, where but, you roll it up. Yeah, yeah, but I never saw that. Anyway, <laughs> getting back to uh, Trick Baby. <laughs> so they, they, he, he, like, the guy, how does the guy give up? He's like, fuck you. I know where this guy is. Right. He just grabs the fucking uh, book w- with all the, you know, sign in and everything. He finds Harvey himself. He's like, God damn, was that so hard, Mr. Edward? Harvey Whippleman. Yeah, I Harvey. I see it right Whippleman. there. <laughs> and he's like, he's like, and you better not fucking call him up. He's like, motherfucker, you know, phones in this goddamn hotel. That's right. Couldn't even if I wanted to. So they stomp, stomp their way up the stairs and everything. They knock on the door. Of course, uh, our, our character, Harvey, he's just. Just like, no, no, I'm not taking any guests right now. And they're like, it's me, Mr. Kelly. Oh, Mr. Kelly, I'm so sorry. Comes over, opens the door, welcomes him in. And he's looking for jewelry. Yeah, he's like, I got this jewelry. And he pulls out a, like, a little box, like a barrette or something, in it with like, some diamonds. Yeah, just, just one little ring box or whatever. Yeah. And Mr. Kelly's like, motherfucker, I want the real shit. I don't want this ring. We want. I brought this gentleman here to see the good shit. 
And Harvey is hesitant. He's like, oh, no, I don't keep that here. How could I keep that here? It's too expensive. I, I, anyone could break in and, and steal he goes, it. Listen, African-American. He didn't say that. Go get the good shit. And that puts him in line. Right. I'll tear this apartment apart and find them myself unless you're going to go ahead and just do it for So Harvey, okay, okay, Mr. Kelly, okay, Mr. Kelly, pulls out the good shit. Right, and the guy, the old white man's expecting it. He's, he's licking his lips over it. This is diamonds, just thousands of diamonds. And Harvey's like, that's at least $100,000 in diamonds. Mr. Kelly, you do know that's $100,000 worth of diamonds. I can't take any less than 100000 well, I think he wanted like fifty or something. I don't think yeah, that's not a good trade. It's like I want exactly what you just stolen goods. Well, Murray, he's bargaining. He's just not good at it. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, I'll give you ten. No, you can't do that, Mr. Harvey. You'll kill me. Look, I'll do whatever I want. You see the color of this skin? I'll do whatever I want, Mr. Whippleman. All right, I, I, I you, know, you drive a hard bargain. Please, at least fifteen. Ten. And the fucking old man just smiling like, that's a guy who knows how to be in charge. Right. And he's like, all right, you got me 10. Yeah. I'll take it. I don't think he even said agrees. He just throws him 10 grand and walks out with it. Harvey shit. doesn't even get to agree. He <laughs> agrees on the fact that he won't get pummeled by this. I mean, he's malnourished. He's awful looking. He's an elderly black man. He's an elderly yeah. black man. And then you got Mr. Kelly, who's just fucking jacked to the gills. He's got that, that quaffed hair. Yeah. He's beautiful. He's very well nourished and everything. <laughs> he could have pummeled the fuck out of him. But no, he's like, you're not going to get any lumps today. You're going to get 10 grand, and you're going to shut the fuck up. And he just throws it at him and walks out the door with the loot, the ice, as they say on the streets. That's right. And then we get some nice music interlude as we watch Harvey take off his shirt, shave I his I was beard disappointed off. we didn't get a theme song, but I guess the somber tone of this movie, it would be inappropriate to have a trick, baby. Bum, 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 yeah, be, I would well, like well, to hear this song, Hey, maybe trick, we can put that into the AI. <laughs> we need a theme song for... <laughs> Make that happen. <laughs> And so, yeah, and then Harvey's like, he's like ecstatic. He's like cleaning himself up, he's shaving. Yeah, you just lost $10,000. What are you so happy about, Harvey? And then we look over at Mr. Kelly, who, you know, finishes dropping off uh, his, you know, parts ways with the old white guy. He's getting his car. And uh, a few seasons later, we're following Harvey. He gets in his own car. He's looking like a made man. He's got a beautiful jacket, great hat. Right. And we see both of them making their way to this apartment. We see uh, Mr. Kelly, we thought was this scumbag, racist white guy, slapping five with black people. They're all greeting him. We're like, That's what's right. going on here? Man, this guy. And then they meet up. They both go in the, the separate elevators. They meet at the exact same time they open up. That's right. And they look, and we're like, what the fuck? This guy just fucked this What's going on here? Right. And they fucking slap each other five, and we're like, oh, shit. Uh, These guys are working together. Then as we're seeing that they're working together, we get some quick cuts of the old man. He's trying to pawn off those diamonds, and he's learning that they're fake. They're right. glass. And so we watch him as he drives off in his car. And again, we're in the bad side of Philadelphia, and he apparently has a heart attack or something. Right, he's so upset by it. He yeah. He has a heart attack. And yeah. He crashes this his car. Very convincing job by this old man. I thought he literally died right there. Yeah. And just lets go of the weird wheel. Jesus decides it's his time, and he crashes into a building. Jesus does not take the wheel. Yeah. He crashes. Well, I was saying that Jesus said, come up here, old man. You're clearly not fit for this world anymore. You're getting conned by everybody. So now, our cares, we learn this isn't Harvey and Mr. Kelly. This is blue and white folks. White folks. Greatest name. Right. Mr. White folks. Yeah, and he's a white guy, so Murray, clearly he is. Got to be one of the good ones, I think. Not so fast. Not so fast? Not so fast, because we're at Blue's apartment with his young, much younger wife, Cleo. Total cunt. Hated her. (laughs) She's not one of the good ones. Yeah. She's like sleeping in bed. It's like fucking one o'clock in the afternoon. She's still sleeping in bed. He... Well, when you live the high life like you do, it's like, what What does time even mean? What do you think time means to Elon Musk? He's just screwing he's, people he's over all day. He's the time master. Night. He's the time. He decides what time it is. Oh, I thought Bill Gates did. No, he's too busy putting microchips in our vaccines. That's right. So, 
did she ask for Shirley Temple? Because she wanted a grenadine and it's soda. Soda. Is that a Shirley Temple? That might be. I'm not. I'm not too sure. <laughs> yeah, but I do is. like White's. Like her ten. The tension between White and Cleo is a fascinating. Yeah. Because she doesn't like having a white man in her apartment, and she wakes up because she hears that uh, Blue is going to be giving White some money. Right. His cut of the the con they just did. Exactly. And she's like, "Why are you giving this honky anything?" And he's like, I've told you about this. He is not a honky. I knew his fucking mom. She was as black as you. And so this is what we, this is how we, this is the whole conceit of the entire movie. First of all, Trick Baby, if you don't know, is the baby that a prostitute has with her John. Oh. Because it's a trick. He's a trick. trick. Yes, of trick course. Baby. And so, yes, white folks' mom was a black woman. His father was a white man, and he can pass for white. Yes. And that's why they run these great cons, because they can get into the white world as well as the black world. Right. So Blue values him, and Blue has known him since he was a kid and took him in and mentored him. Yeah. She taught him the game. And, and so he's like, no, this guy's almost like a son to me. I don't know. Wh-. And she's just like, fuck this guy. I yeah. don't believe he's even fucking black. He's like, I fucking knew his mom, all right? Yeah. So the story of this whole movie isn't so much about Blue. He's playing kind of sidecar. Well, that's what I that's what I was disappointed in. And I don't know. I, I have to, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read the book because I'm very interested in because they, they don't really, as far as I'm concerned, they touch on it, but they don't delve into the, the world that white folks lives in and where he's kind of. In between two worlds, like he's not—he's not black enough for Cleo, right? But at the same time, even though he can't pass as a white man, inside he's a black man, and he's—he experiences racism and knows how through his friends and knows how fucked up that is, and knows himself that he's part black. So I think if they, because in this movie it's more about the cons, which is fine, yeah, you know. But I think if you're doing a a a movie called Trick Baby. I think you want to know more about Trick Baby. Uh, yeah, because that's I, what the blacks call him on the street. That's an insult. So, oh, okay. you know, the ones that don't like him call right. him just a Trick Baby. Right. You know? And there's just as many people who don't like him because it's easy to judge people by appearances, which is the whole idea of you know how a lot of our white characters in this movie look at black characters. Right. Is simply no, you're beneath us because you look right. different. Right. So, you know, you get a little inverse experts, but you have a lot of characters that accept white folks, including Blue, who we know is one of the coolest motherfuckers in town, aside from the abuse he is given. But, yeah, he, he, he's raised him since he's a baby. Well, this- yeah, because we learn that Blue is addicted to the game. like, he, And they, we, they, they, they have scenes where they show us that. Where, like, because white folks is just doing it because this is survive. Yeah. You know, he doesn't, he, I know, he doesn't, so much hate. He is no. He's ambivalent about. And there's no hate or love. It's just like, like blue enjoys conning people. Yeah. And white is doing is, is you know like I said to make a living. That's yeah. all he knows because that's what blue brought him up. After basically like every other trick we do see uh, or con, we see white have some kind of like, oh man, what about that old guy? And blue has to tell him like. Dude, that guy would have fucked us over ten times to Tuesday. Like he would have done it in a much more subtle way, by taxing us or cutting on, you know, flipping all of our grocery stores for Dollar Generals or something. He would have fucked us over some way. So all we did was just cut him off before he could do that. Right, because before Cleo comes out of a room, there is a scene where white folks is like, you know what, I'm giving it up. I'm gonna go live in the country. Yeah, you know. And then Blue's like, you know, you're a city guy. You you can't. And he's like. You know what? Yeah, I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna spend this money on some whores. That's right. You know? I'm just gonna waste it all on <laughs> fucking whores. <laughs> so yeah, so yeah, there's the uh, you just you you get a taste of what uh, white folks is going through, and that there's even though he is half black, he's really not accepted by the black community because he looks white. Yep. At the same time, he doesn't feel comfortable in white society either because he grew up on the streets. Yeah. So that's – I think – I wish, wish they would have done – I don't – and I don't think the actor was good enough to pull that off anyway. And Blue is great. The guy who plays Blue is fucking great. Yeah, I agree. He's not horrible, white folks, but I think – I don't know. I, I they you know. Again, you said it best when you were saying they didn't give us enough connection to whites. They, they just kind of like scanned over him. One of the best scenes is him with that little uh, – Tur- a game hen or whatever they're called, yeah, the little yeah. little chicken guys, yeah. and he has no idea what he's doing. Right. So you get a little bit of it, but probably if it's yeah, like, there's movie. no. 
there's no place for him. That's the, you don't get the angst he feels, which I'm sure a lot of interracial people in real life feel too. Yeah, you know? like because like like you think of like Obama, like he's a black man. Society looks at him and goes, "That's a black man," but yeah. he was raised by white people. Yeah, so that might have been that must have been odd, you know? Because I mean, I'm sure his white family loved him, but still, they don't know what it's like to be black and what he goes through right. being black for sure. So you know, was, yeah, I think there would you know there would be a lot of like issues you know? yeah so in this scene we have blue calling his wife cleo uh a border and she gets all pissed off at him storms out of the room and we see that blue is very quick to calm down a situation he goes in there and he starts telling her jokes and everything he's always conning people her. I yeah mean, really when you think again about you said it, it yeah. he's a manipulator yeah and he is very good at manipulating and he gets off on it. even the closest people to him Right. So he calms her down, and they're agreeing to meet up with uh, white um, white folks later that night at you know their favorite bar. They're going right, to go celebrate. Out. Yeah. yeah, to celebrate their big con. So now we cut to the, what? Who was that old man? Was he just some random old man? No, he was the uncle of fucking a made man, Nino. Yeah. Nino Pelopetrino. Pelopetrino. <laughs> And they're at the hospital. We got his uh, the old man's wife crying, this, you know, and he's pissed off. He's like, "What the fuck happened with yeah. my fucking uncle? He was found in the fucking ghetto. His car was crashed. He's got his own fucking personal uh, uh, priest there with him. He's telling him anything you would do for me, you do for my uncle here. Right. He is like the savior of my life or whatever." And so Nino walks out of the room, and there's. Dot Murray. Dot Murray. And Murray's yeah. AI name. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Dot Murray. Dot com Murray. And yeah, because every uh, mafia guy has their own dirty cop. That's and right. Dot Murray is as Nino's. And he's a black cop, too. And he's like, what the fuck happened? He's like, look, I'm here. I'm, I'm getting stories on the street. I don't know who did it yet. Yep. But I know it was about some fucking fake diamonds that yeah. your uncle bought. He had talked to the jeweler that uh, the yeah. uncle had brought the diamonds to, and he learned that he was very distraught when he learned that, you know, because right. he wasted 10 grand. Yeah, because we learned he he is like a, like a fur dealer or something. He knows nothing about diamonds and right. shit. So That's he, what Nino says. He yeah. doesn't know anything about diamonds. Why would he? That's why he got caught in the hustle. Because he right. knows nothing about diamonds. Right. And fucking, yeah, because white folks in blue are so good at what they do, they can hook them. So he's just like, look, all right, I want more details, whatever, I, whatever it costs. Yep, you know my, you know my pockets are deep. Go out there, give me the information, put the screw on these guys, and come back to me when you got more information. All right, now we cut to we see we see this white woman in a fur coat. So we know she's got money, and she looks nervous. She's on the, I'm assuming the south side. Cause in the south side, always the rough side, of town, uh, yeah, that's everywhere. Right. And she's like looking nervous. She's looking for a cab. She's the fuck clutching out. her purse like it's right. a goddamn football, you know? Right. And fucking white folks, gears always turns like, I got a pigeon right there. Goes makes a beeline for her. That's right. And he's like, Hey, what's the problem? He's like, I can't get a cab here. And he's like, Ah, oh, don't worry about it. He goes out steps in front of a car. He does. He jumps in front of a car. Fucking the guy's like, Man, what the fuck's wrong with you? He's like, Hey, I got a fucking lady here. So he puts the woman in the car, Susan, we learn her name is. Yeah, he's just going to, it looks like he's going to just put her in the car. This is where I was trying to figure out, are they working together or what? Because he puts the uh, Susan in the car and then he looks over at the cabbie and the cabbie is staring daggers into his face. And he's like, I better go with you. Right. And then he starts working Susan immediately. And like I said, it, it's all about conf That's why they call con men. It's no, for confidence men. Because his game is weak in this fucking thing. What the thing, you know, the way he's working her, yet the confidence he exudes works on her. Because there's a, we'll get into it. There's a bizarre fucking scene coming up. Oh, right? my the God. Next scene. So many things about this is bizarre because she's trying to go back to. Well, she, yeah, we learned that she has like a seamstress or something that, you know, probably some. Fucking black woman she takes advantage of, you know, because she's like a possibly. rich bitch. Yeah. And so she has to go in the bad side of town to get her shit done. And so that's why she was there. Okay. I don't remember where he was supposed to be taking her in the cab. Because well, I thought he took a B route and took her to a hotel. He did. He was yeah. just like, look, I'm in town from Chicago. He's running his con. Right. I'm I'm in some money. I'm just partying, and she goes along with it. That was so weird about it. I like his name was a throwback to another movie we did. It was Mr. Jonathan. Was it? 
<laughs> it was Jonathan something, but yeah, I forget. Johnny something. Yeah. McNeil, and maybe? He, yeah, so he takes her to a hotel. He's, She's going along with yeah. this, too. Confidence. That's right. And he goes up to the fucking you know, clerk at the desk, and he's like, I would like the presidential suite. And the guy, there's no resi- there's no occupancy up there on the top floor. 100, 200, 300, 4, and then you see the face of the clerk, and it's yeah, just... Yeah, because he did come in with kind of like a pimp-like jacket. He had like a fur collar, so the guy was like, oh, this is some riffraff. Riffraff, yeah. And then he, like you said, throws on those $500 bills. That's like, right. Sir, whatever you like. That's right. So... There we see the presidential suite door just open up, right. and the two walk in there. He's talking about how nice the floors are to her. Right. And she's just like, look, I've just met you. I kind of got to get home. He's like, no, 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 baby. Don't worry about it. You know, we have time to do some shit. Yeah. I mean, wh- why did you look so frightened when you were out on that streets there? And she's like, well, I got to admit, like, I'm not, I'm usually around black, black people. So I, I got scared. I mean, I'm ashamed of that, but, yeah. you know, I just... I was scared. I was scared by those black faces. Black faces scare you? <laughs> he's got the champagne there on ice, and he's like, oh, I can make myself a black face. And he <laughs> lights the cork to get it, you know, all inkied up. Yeah, and then this, he starts, this was weird. I don't know what the So strange. Was. Yeah. Smears it just a little bit on his face. He didn't go full on black face. He just no, smeared his cheeks. Some, yeah. Covered his cheeks. and like Got it all over his hands. Yeah. And, and then he tries to make a move on her. Yeah. A gropey, like, well, not gropey because he didn't go for the honkers. He didn't cigar <laughs> it. He went for the shoulder arm area. Yeah. He starts rubbing his face on her white sweater. Yeah. So she's, he's getting all this shit on her. And she's cool. Like, she's uh, giggling. Yeah. But again, the situation. Well, yeah. Probably- and you know what? It's weird because the mo- racism, the main theme of this movie is racism. But I think this scene is sexism because it's like. At this time, 50 years ago, feminism is just starting. Women just went along with whatever man told them to do. Okay. You know, so I think that's what they're trying to get across. Okay. I don't know why she would put up with it. No woman now would put up with it. I would hope not. And so she's just like, oh, my God, you got this shit on my... I'm going to go clean this off. She goes to the bathroom. Right. Giggly, polite, even though everything about the situation is... Weird. Fucking weird. Run for the door. (laughs) And he... He looks over that champagne. He pours himself a tall glass. He even thinks he's like, shit, I fucked he up. He struck out. Even yeah. though, based on what we're seeing here, is that he gets away with this all the time. He does the blackface joke on every fucking woman. <laughs> yeah. And next thing you know, he's in pound town. But today, Susan saw through it. Yeah. Not so, everybody bats a thousand. You know? Exactly. Not even Wade Boggs. Not even Wade Boggs. On the juice. On the Wade juice. Boggs. So he fucking chugs a couple glasses of champagne. It's just like, all right, I'll you know take her back downstairs, see if I can get a couple hundred back for that, or maybe con somebody else into the room, something. Right. And she walks. Sublet the sweet. <laughs> <laughs> Why is there black ink everywhere? Uh, she walks out of the bathroom in her undies, her skeevies. Right. Apparently, it works. It, it works. <laughs> I don't recommend anyone try that. Don't try this. Don't try blackface to get laid. No, don't. I do not think that'll work in 2023. Uh, 50 years ago, it worked perfectly. So now we get an even weirder scene, and it doesn't even register on the speed and scale <laughs> no. because we're getting splice ups. And why yeah. is this scene in existence? I don't know. Does this show different ways white people and black people have sex? I don't know. And just to remind you, we both like this movie. Yeah, it's a good movie. Even good movies have rocky scenes because this scene is fucking bizarre. Yeah. It's a cut up of the two having sex in their own way. Yeah, they're going back and forth. We see Blue with Cleo. And you said this best. Cleo is not interested. No, in, she's sick uh, of him. Yeah. Well, she's using him. I mean, she's a much younger woman. So. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe maybe he's maybe Blue is so lost in his own fog yeah. that he fooled himself into thinking she's into him. Because maybe, she's clearly not. Do you think this is what Leonardo DiCaprio experiences? Because he's also really into the nineteen year old crowd. He's got yeah. a new girlfriend that's nineteen right now. He's going on yeah. sixty. It's kinda got that body. Isn't he fifty seven? No, he's my age. We have, we're the exact same age. He's forty eight. Oh, forty eight. Okay. Yeah. That's still a huge difference. Yes. I, yeah, I mean, no, I understand from a sexual standpoint wanting to bang a 20-year-old, but I don't know, like, I wouldn't want to hang out with a 20-year-old. Why would you want to hang out with a 
twenty year old as well. I mean, he's uh, I mean, he's probably he's mentally that you know he's stunted mentally, emotionally stunted. Yeah. So he's in Hollywood that, would do that to you, right? Because you're just coddled. Yeah, and he's been he's been famous since he was fucking like a teenager. You That's know? right. So it would make sense. Anyways, blue is fucking clear, and we're seeing uh, uh, white folks fuck uh, Susan. So blue. Cleo was turned on her side in the very edge of the bed. Face is right in the camera, and we got Blue just trying to smooch on her. You Whispering know. sweet nothings into her ears. Right. And then we cut over to White, and Susan is on her back. She's got her shirt off. We're seeing her hard nips, yeah. and uh, uh, White is moving in for you know the thrust. But she's she, all business. Yeah, he's all business, yeah. and she's like, no, Jonathan, slow down. Mr. Jonathan, slow down. Let me touch your face, and... You right, know, t a, talk to me. Tell me something about right, you. She that suburban sex. Yeah, I see you're four inches from the ground, but you know, give me yeah, something. That's, that's where you got the black side. Yeah. What? What? What kind of? What do you feel? How do you feel about balconies? Oh, sugar, you so fine. Oh, you the sweetest. John, let me wipe your face first. Hold on. Yeah, baby. Yeah, stay with me, love. Stay with me, love. Come to me. Come to me, Johnny. Hold me, Johnny. Talk to me. Stay with me. Oh. Am I good? Am I good? Baby, baby, baby. Come. Yeah, she's just talking way too much. Oh, yeah. And so we're like, think. So we're like, may, maybe this is what they're saying: is Blue should be with Susan, and White folks should be with Cleo, maybe. because they both they're they're opposing fucking stuff. Right. I mean, it also the opposites attract kind of situation going there too, because Cleo does not like White folks too much. So maybe they'd have real chemistry in the bedroom. Yeah, she just needs a good fucking, as most guys would say. <laughs> so yeah, um, yeah, it was like you said, the Swedes and scale is a big fat zero. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't even register it. There's no music. No music. I maybe I'll pipe in some of the audio of just the horrible ADR or uh, whatever they call it, uh, audio after the effect or whatever, because they give you. It sounds like it's supposed to sound like delicious peach eating. <laughs> Instead, what it sounds like is a man gargling rocks or something. It is fucking awful, yeah. and I kind of want everyone to experience right. that. All right, everybody's finished fucking. Now it's time to go to the club and have a drinky poo. So uh, uh, Blue shows up in his finest suit with Lady Cleo. Everyone's greeting him. This is a hangout for all the hustlers. He even says there's only two kinds of people in this world, hustlers and suckers. And what would we do without the suckers? So tonight we drink to those suckers. He was so happy. I mean, come on. Right. He's got he's got five grand yeah, in his exactly. pocket. Because of suckers. Right. Uh drinks all around. Show me to my favorite corner. Make sure the champagne is flowing all night. No cost right. is too much. Five thousand right. dollars. Yeah, and then folks shows up and Cleo's still icy with him. I think she's also jealous of the relationship they have. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. And so and like you know, like a, like the perfect con man, Blue's always like trying to make everybody feel comfortable at ease. He's like, "Come on, baby, you know, this yeah. is my boy. Move down, make some room for him." That's right. They were supposed to be sitting opposite each other. Instead, now they're sitting on the same side. You know, it's not a romantic evening if you're sitting on the same side. Right. That ruins the whole affair. And then we see a guy in the background, this older black man, and he's like motions to him, and Blue's like, "Baby, go powder your nose." I don't have to powder. Go powder your nose. We got men business to take care of. So she goes and powders her nose. And this the man gets up. We learned his name is Felix. Yep. And he basically runs Philly, the south side of Philly, at least, underworld. Yeah. Because he has all the connections. He knows all the judges, all the DAs, all the cops that are dirty. And you got to give him a little taste of everything you do. 10%. 10% of yeah. 10000 That's $1,000. Yeah. I did the math. 10% of... 10% of 10000 No. Okay, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so 
he's just like, and he lets it. He he, he lists if he lists off his credentials. He's like, you know how much it costs to keep you motherfuckers out of jail. You know, yeah. I'm the one doing that, right? Your old ass is gonna be you know, like going up the river, for fucking ten years if they find out this shit. Yeah, he's very subtle about it. He does it right. his his nice, you know, kind of nonchalant way and all that. He gets his message across, and he gets his he gets paid right. right they there. grumble about it, but they hand over the money. That's right. And so, like now, it's time to party. Folks has been saying to uh, Blue all night. He's like, you know, I got this other thing I got to go attend to tonight, so I can't hang out too late. And Blue's like, no, you're my boy. You got to stay here tonight. No, no, no. I got this other thing I'm working on now. I got I, I got to take off. Right. So after paying off Felix and everything, we cut over to see exactly what White Folks was talking about. Right. We see. Uh, we, now we learned that we, we assumed, and we now we were right. Susan comes from money. She has some class. The friends she was uh, talking about how she had to meet up with, high fluting type. The type of uh, you know upper middle class that talk about politics at Frasier the dinner table. Types. The Fraser Cranes of the world. We were talking about Fraser. I got to throw this uh, question out there. How much does somebody in radio in the early 90s make? Well, we're going to be talking to a radio guy next week, so he'll probably get Oh, you know what? Yeah, we'll to, save to that for him. I mean, it's not polite, first of all, to talk about money with people, so we might not... Put it out there. We'll talk to him privately. Oh, okay. Uh, you know, I don't want to. I don't want to embarrass him. That's true. He's still making more money than we are. All I'm, so all I'm asking like, him is how much uh, radio people in Seattle in the '90s made. That's my question. Yeah. Not about how much. And he you're makes. on talk radio too. You're not even on like a station people listen to. You Oof. know, you're on this talk radio station. That's right. All right. I mean, Mike Valenti. I'm sure he's rolling in the money. Oh, he's got to be making at least 14 figures. So, yeah, he's at a white people party, and this fucking scene infuriated me in how accurate it was. It is a little too accurate. We're seeing, again, we've been talking about we want to see the discomfort in white folks, and this is really the scene you get to see it. Right, because even though he can pass for white, this is an alien world to him, and a world I'm sure he's got... Rightful grievances against because I'm I'm literally white and I have rightful grievances against these motherfuckers. I hated these motherfuckers. Oh yeah, these are absolutely the worst kind of people. Yeah, these are the people Martin Luther King was trying to warn us about. Yeah. So do we want to pipe? We want to give the people a little taste of what the conversation was in this scene. Oh yeah, let's hear some some of that dinner conversation. Uh, it's you liberals who have lifted them up, Howard. Paul, oh, you conservatives make a mistake. You can't afford to strangle hope and. Well, without hope, people become dangerous. No, Howard, you liberals have let them invade our society. You give them jobs, political jobs. Paul, you missed the point. It's only the smart ones we move up. <laughs> that makes it even worse. No, oh, you know, we have to move them up. If we leave a smart one in the ghetto, he might develop into a leader against us. But if we raise him up into white society, we neutralize him. He feels compelled to try to act like us. He loses his identity and uh, his racial anger, if he has any. He becomes alien to his brothers. They realize he sold them out and they grow to hate him. He becomes worthless to them and safe for us. Uh, no, thank you. In fact, in his love for the creature comforts, except for his color, he's become one of us. All right. I wonder if... I'm going to read the book this was based on, because I think this came... this. The words came straight out of Iceberg Slim's mind because he got it so perfectly. You got because it's like I don't care what their politics are because they even point out this guy's like I'm liberal, I'm conservative. Yeah. But at the, at the end of the day, when it comes down to it, when it comes to their money, yeah, one percent stick together no matter what their politics are. And that's right. And they're just talking about how they're explaining. Meanwhile, let's point out while they're doing this. They have black people serving them. They're talking about black people as they don't exist, which I, I, I don't know if you've ever had this when you were doing your installs. Like, I've been in fucking work for rich people where they do treat you like that. Yeah. Like, you just don't exist. You're subhuman. Yep. You know, it's usually, it's all, and it's always, always the wife who doesn't even work who acts like that. Yeah. Which I've had. Oh, yeah. And so, yeah, I, I'm totally down with fucking white folks. I know exactly what he's feeling like. Yeah. And like you again, what we were talking about, where we're seeing the discomfort now. He's trying to work that game hen. He just can't quite figure it out. He's like scooping in its crevice to see what they stuffed into it. He's like, what the what the fuck's going on in here? Uh, you see Susan. She's kind of looking at him, but she's still a little, you know, she's got a smile on her face about it. 
Right. Well, yeah, this is the only world she knows. You know? Yeah. So. Well, I know. I mean, she's enjoying watching white folks work this uh, game hen. Well, yeah. There's. Pr- she yeah, finds well, it cute. Yes. A little condescending, but yeah. So we're just kind of like rolling through this dinner party. We're getting cuts of like Blue at the bar and everything, but that's not important to the story. We're just seeing Blue right. doing Blue stuff. Folks, uh, he's, you know, standing up. He's sharing a glass of champagne, and he's just— well, They're probably drinking like sherry or something. Yeah. The, the cigars. Something Frazier would drink. Super sherry. Douche. Always like It's like all the men folk go to the library or whatever with their sherry and their cigars. 100% accurate. You know? yeah. He's standing in an aisle or, you know, under a archway and everything. He's smoking a cigar. And then, uh, oh, it was an H name. Harry. I believe it was Harry. Okay. Harry comes up to him. So I've been hearing you're planning on making a bunch of money. How do you plan on doing that? Because I have money, but I don't have enough money. Right. And he, he's like, I thought he was just like, he's like, I got to leave because I've got this deal I got to do in the morning. And they were like, what? He he leads him on with that for like he talks about it first. And then he's like, well, I got to get going now. I got to work on that deal. Right. But he does string him along for a little while. Yeah, he's here. like, I'm about to turn 100 grand into 500 grand. This is exactly the spot it happens in, too. So he's got one person listening to him. And you'll notice he slowly ropes in more of the old white dude. So he's got one guy at first, Harry or Henry, whatever his fucking name was. And then next thing you know, a second white guy's there. Like right. money, free money. <laughs> yes. And then in a minute, there's a third and fourth guy. So right. that's what we're working up to. And he's like, yeah, I'm going to buy this property. I'm going to flip it for a huge profit. These black people, it's in the ghetto. These black people don't know what they're sitting on. They're like, property in the ghetto? Why would I want to buy that? Yeah. And he's like, gentrification. It's all the rage. People are going to want to live in this place. We're going to tear it down, build condos. It's going to be fucking amazing. We're going to put up parking lots. We're going to build a new stadium that the taxpayers pay for. We're going to fucking promise them low, you know, affordable housing. We're not ever going to give it to them. We're going to build another parking lot and then maybe a Dollar General. Mm, I like the way that sounds. Tell me more. Can we put a Little Caesars somewhere down there? <laughs> Of course. Cut back to Blue. He's he's in a hot poker game in the back room of the club. We see, I think his name was Melvin Pimp, who played by Ted Lange, who uh, was the Isaac the bartender on Love Bow. He also played a pimp in Friday Foster. He tried yeah, to turn out Pam yeah. Greer. And he's he's fucking on a roll. He's just fucking, you know, people are just like, holy shit. Yeah, we see at the table, he's got a lot of the money. Right. And we're seeing a big showdown between him and Blue. He's got the blonde, you know, uh, what was his name? Harry? I, I don't remember the black. Uh, Melvin. I Melvin. Think uh, he's got the long, you know, uh, cigar sticking out of his mouth and everything. And he's running the table, like you said. So he he's obviously playing a mean bluff game, but turns right. out Blue's got a meaner bluff game. And then he gets a call from white folks. And the bartender's like, yo, folks wants to talk to you. He's like, I'm fucking on a roll. I don't have time for that. He's got this great fucking deal. You've got to talk to him. Right. So he goes, he answers the call. He's like, all right, I'm out of this hand. I'll be back. And, like, folks is like, I got these fucking hunkies on the hook. Yep. We need to run this. They probably, this is probably a scam they've run a million times. He's like, we need to run scam 2.0. Right. Great shot here. We see folks just, like, in the office in this house. And you got... Five white people now, five old white dudes waiting for him to come back because they want to get in on this, you know, this easy money. Right. And so after he finishes up with Blue on the phone, he's going to return to the white folks and Howard, not Henry or Harry, whatever I said, it was Howard. Right. Because what he said was, he's like, I got this black realtor. He he represents the community. Right. And he's not... And I, he's like, I already have investors. Yeah. All right. Because I'm putting ten grand in, and they're all we're all putting ten grand. Yes. So like, and they're like, well, why shouldn't there be counter offers? They're like, because right. they went in on it. He's like, he's like, I don't know about this black guy. I'll talk. That's why he's making the phone calls. Like, I'll talk to him. Right. He's trying to squeeze out supposedly the right. other investors, work in these right. new investors and all that. But he's got to talk to. The, yeah, the, and he's like, this is a black guy. So, of course, he's going to you know, side with the black people. So right. I don't know if I can work this. Sometimes he goes for you know, the humanitarianism over the, you know, the business. Right. Well, he, yeah, he has a sense of honor. He made a deal with these other investors. Right. So Howard and the other white folks are trying to say, well, doesn't he understand that business should always come first? Capitalism 101 are the deal. 
Right. So he's just like, he's, he comes out. He's like, look, I think he's open to the idea of having a counter offer. So we're going to, you guys get your money. It's got to be cash. You got to get your money together. Yeah. And we'll go down there tomorrow. Yeah. He, he comes back with bad news. We can't go see it tonight because Howard was eager to see the properties tonight. It won't matter, my boy. We could just go look at it. We could just see what we're going to be yeah, I, well, no, he, in. This is the thing. He goes from begging, because this is a fucking rich white guy move, to like being like indignant. It's like, well, I should be able to see this. He's not even in on the deal yet. And right. he's like trying to like call the shots. Right. He's trying to be forceful with white folks here. Right. But white folks We saw the way white folks ate that fucking game hand. He's yeah. like, I can I can outsmart this exactly. guy. Exactly, exactly. And this is where we get Susan, who doesn't even know she's gonna work into this deal, uh, because she's like, Yeah, I'm ready to go. My friends are not all that fun tonight. These are the worst fucking friends to possibly have. Of course they're right. not fun. And she just fucked this dude and touched his face. Of course she wants to go back and get her face touched and fucked some more. Right. So she's ready to go. White folk. Look, guys, I got to get out of here. She obviously wants my dick again. Women, I, you know. You know how it goes. And look, here's what we'll do. Tomorrow, we'll work out something in the morning, but you got to have your cash ready We'll pick you up. We'll meet with the black realtor. We'll talk to him, and we'll get a chance. But you got to come with the money, cash in hand. Right, because I guess the deal was supposed to go happen in like two days with the other investors or yeah. something like that. So yeah, we'll like, see we got to move fast. We'll see if we can cut him off. Right. So, because he's like, yeah, you're you're right. Why should I be loyal to these people that are my investors when I got you guys? I you're, don't. You're, you're right. I don't, I don't get why I didn't understand that business over everything. <laughs> right. We should always make the most money possible. So they go back to the bar to meet up, blue and white folk. That's right. And they're working out the logistics. And when, as they're doing that, old Dot shows up, oh, old Mr. Murray. Geez. And he's like, oh, I heard, I heard you guys were involved with some con. Did you hear about what happened to Franchetti? Franchetti? Yeah, that's that's the that's Nino Petr Petricelli, where the fuck his <laughs> name was. That's his uncle. Yeah, he loves that fucking old white man, and I know you guys were involved with it. And you better give me five k right now, or I'm gonna go right to his ass. <laughs> so Blue lets out a big old piss in your pants. I don't got five k on me. I mean, I do. No, 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 no. What happened was he's like, I gotta excuse myself. I'm an old man. I have a bladder issues, yeah. and then Dot says, "Piss in your pants." Oh, okay. Because he's like, "Fuck you. You ain't gonna fucking go out the back window of the bathroom." And he's like, and if you do, I'll sell out your buddy white folks. This little trick baby motherfucker. Yeah, I'll give him. I'll give him up to Nino Panicelli after I have my cut of him first. And he's like, no, 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 no. I'm just an old man. I got to pee a lot. I'll be back. Yep. So he goes, excuses himself to the bathroom. Please help me out with what the fuck was happening here. Bathroom with envelopes. Every you know, is this he had, no, they, they, like, they're always prepared. They're like the Boy Scouts of cons. Oh, so okay, he had okay, some okay. envelopes. The MacGyver of cons. Yeah. He's got, he always carries a bunch of envelopes because he, oh, he probably okay. – that's one of their cons. They probably do it every fucking other day. I mean, it, it would make sense why he comes back and White just picks it right up. Right, yeah. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, they know what they're doing. So he goes, did you like that shot? Remember, I don't know. They, I, I I hope they don't have these anymore because they were disgusting. The thing where it was like a towel that went in, the, in the bathroom oh, where you dry yeah. your hands. Yeah, yeah, It was just one rotating towel. Yeah, yeah. so they had a shot like right through the towel where you can see. Very artistic. For, yeah, you know. it's a choice. It's yeah. a choice. And then he pulls out an envelope, and we see he slices the razor blade, the bottom of the envelope, so right. it's open. And then he pulls out some toilet paper, and he folds it up carefully. Pulls out that five grand, like, goes... They, they, Does the Indiana Jones. Yeah, it's like, they weigh the same, okay. Uh -huh. Puts the toilet paper in the envelope, and then walks out. Right. All right, yes, yes. So, like I said, this, if you love cons, this movie's full of all the different cons that people use. Right. So, they go. he goes up. Like I said, White is already on the beat. He knows yeah. what's happening here, and they're he gave his blue game the Iggy is when he went to the bathroom. That had to be it. Yeah. So they're of course get, he's going to intervene and be like, "What? What? How? How are we supposed to trust you? Just taking five k from us today? We give you half of it today, right? And then we'll give you half fucking tomorrow because we'll we, we, we're mail gonna, you half, right? Because we want we're going to get the fuck out of town, right? We need like a day to get out of town, exactly. And he's like, "Fuck that shit! You're going to give me all of it." And then folks is like, oh, wait, there's got to be a solution. How about we? How about we do this? All right, we will put the five k in an envelope. But I know you're gonna fuck me over, Dot. 
So what we're going to do is I'm going to put a note in there that incriminates you along with us. Oh, okay. So if you pull some shit, because what we're going to do is we're going to mail it with your name on it, care of the police precinct you work at. So it's going to go to the police precinct, but I have your name on it. But if you pull some shit, we're going to fuck, we'll be there and we'll open up the fucking envelope for your boss. Yeah. And we're all going to go up the river. <laughs> And but he's like, but well, we don't have to worry about that if you're going to be honest, right? That and that's like, all right, I'll go along with that. So like, Blue's like, well, tell me what your your, your address is. So he writes out the address on it, right. and he puts. He's like, here's the money. Pulls out the money. And he puts it in, and it falls out the bottom. Right. And like White just catches. They, they've done this so many times. White just catches it, puts the pockets it, and there's still that toilet paper inside of that's it. That's right. So it's padded and all that. Right. Double quilt, and then quilt. and then fucking dots like you motherfucker. If there's there's more. There's another fucking envelope with some bullshit in it. I'm gonna you know, like, like show me all the envelopes. He pulls them out. There's scatters all, them. Looks there, like a magic trick, right? There's no there's no other envelope with the address on it, so it's legit. There's only one envelope with Dot Murray's uh, address on it, right? So they're like, he's like, I don't trust you, motherfucker. As far as I can throw you. Let me give me that fucking envelope. Like Blue's like, I don't trust you, motherfucker. It's like, all right, we're gonna go out to the both holding this envelope, yeah. and we're gonna put it into the uh, the uh, mailbox because we know that it's gonna be mailed. It's gonna be delivered by the afternoon, which will give us enough time to get out of town. Right. So they settle everything with Dot. He's along on his way, and fo- uh, white folks and Blue are driving back home, and folks is nervous about Dot and Nino now. Right. He's like. The ma- this dude, this is the mafia. You do not fuck with the mafia. We got to get the fuck out of town. And he's like, "Don't worry, we will. As soon as we finish this fucking property con, we're out. We got to get out of the, out of fucking town tomorrow. We don't have time to do." These and he's deals. like, "Look, that fucking envelope ain't gonna be delivered till the afternoon. We'll do the, the con in the morning. We'll right. get their money and we'll leave." That's right. And he's like, "And just it just so happens there's the perfect property to <laughs> seize this fucking abandoned building." I mean, when you're blue, you see opportunity everywhere. You right. don't see pessimism, you see opportunity. Right. Capitalism. That's right. And so the next morning, we they set up shop in some fucking, probably was an abandoned fucking office, but they make it look like a fucking realtor shop. That's right. And all the whites show up in their fucking limb. I think... Uh, it was like in the... Was it Matt for Files episode where they set up Rockford a whole... Rockford Files. <laughs> Matt for... Or guess. Yeah. Rockford, Rockford Files, Files yeah. episode where they set up a whole con in office building. Yeah, and then they returned to yeah. it, and it was just empty. Yeah. It's that, that same they, level. That was the 70s thing. We just yeah. did that. A lot of fucking uh, real estate out there that you could do that. Your cons in. Apparently, all the cities are empty now. So, yeah. So, he's dressed up. He's going to play the role of the black realtor who's too dumb. He doesn't know what he has. You right. Know? That's right. So, and then what? a nice touch. Uh, white folks had a buddy who uh, drives a limo drive him there to make him look like he had more money. Oh. So, he brings all the honkies with him. In right. the limo. Okay. They get out, and then it's, you know, uh, Blue is like, they, they explain the situation. He's like, look, I got some new investors. Let's 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 get rid of those old investors. Like, that doesn't sound honest. I don't like that. Right. We told these people we were going to, you know, do the deal with we them. We have to do the right thing here. I have promised this to these groups of investors, and this is where Howard goes, Full Karen, let me see this property right now. I don't care if it's spoken for. I want to see this property. Right. He's like, he's like, no paperwork has been done, so anyone should be allowed to look at this property. And Blue is playing the, his role perfectly because he's not too ignorant. He is like kind of quiet he's, he's playing subservient which is what these guys are used to yeah you know people doing right you know? he he's giving these white folk exactly i should stop saying white folks that's the character <laughs> name he's giving howard and his crew exactly what they want to hear they want to use forceful language that cripples him and sure enough he he crumbles and lets them walk all over him and he's like okay but well, you can see it yeah just remember i already promised this to somebody else though yeah I, it won't hurt just to look, I guess. Yeah. So they go out there, and they see there's construction, like demolition working on a building. And so they're like, wow, there really is some like development going on. He's like, no, that's not it. Yeah. It's over there, and there's like these huge tenement buildings. That's right. what you're the property. So, yeah. but, but they're giving the illusion that there is development happening in this section of town. Right. They're giving them exactly what they promised them. They're seeing it. They're saying, you could put a fucking... Little Caesars, I know you're big on those. Montgomery Ward, you could pop one over there. Sears, think about it. A mall right there. Claire's, Hot Topic. Think about that. Fucking uh, Cinnabon. Cinna 
bun. And so they go back to the Blue's office, and they lay out the fucking hundred grand. Everyone has like fucking ten, ten grand. There's a one guy who's just there to hold the money. He's just flopping down the money. Yeah. And then Blue's like, you know what? No, I can't. I just don't feel right about cutting those people out. <laughs> this is how dare you? Oh, I know what you want. You want more money? Is that it? And he snaps his finger. Guy pulls out, puts another ten grand down. That's no, right. I just. This, my word means something to me. All right, another ten grand. I I swear they ended up in a second site, or maybe it's just the back room of their office here. But yeah, just the money, the stacks, because they have it bound in you know the beautiful banknotes and all right. that stacking up. And it's like, well, okay, but we're gonna have to continue the sale tomorrow. So you can just leave this money here with me. Yeah, they finally settle on one hundred thirty grand. Okay, so. And he's like, yeah. He's like, he's like, I got to think about the people that own this building, and an extra thirty grand would really work, help out. So yeah. I'll take the deal. This is I, you normally don't do this. Yeah, I'm I, a man of my word. I think they expected Howard to go along, but Howard apparently has bought real estate before, and he's like, wait, you're telling me today we're not going to sign this off and give you're going to hand me over like the rights or whatever the deeds or anything? Right. And they're like, oh no, we got to do that tomorrow. And he's like, well, why are we going to keep the money with you? Look at this neighborhood you live in. Right. I don't trust that. And so, like, this they didn't this is they didn't suspect. So they're getting a little nervous, blue and white folks. They're like, so they're thinking on their feet and they're like, Well, how about we do this? Because I don't want you backing out of this deal. I'm going, I'm putting my neck out for you guys. So I don't want you just taking your money back either. How about we put in a safety deposit box in a bank? That's right. And we have two snake signatures, and they look over at whites and he says He'll have our half of the signatures. Right. Why would you pick the new person <laughs> in the group? Because he's one of us. That's it's right. just simply that. That's. I mean, that's the whole idea. The yeah. Blue's premise that he's laid out for us in the scene back at his apartment was just, thanks to this guy appearing as white, I can get away with so much fucking shit. And he gets cool as shit. Right. So they go. They, we see the scene where they're putting the money in the safety deposit box. They close it up. And they're like, all right, well, we'll see you tomorrow. So they all leave. And then they're like, Blue's like, meet me here in like an hour. We're going to get the fucking money, and then we're out of here. Yep. But they have to head out in separate di- directions, and there's Dot to cut uh, uh, White Folks Right. Off. That's that's so the, that's so what fucks them up, because yep. he's uh, White Folks is ready to go. He's in the limo with his friend who's driving it, and he's just like, he's ready to go back. Like, do a U-turn and just go back. Yep. And then Dot like runs him off the road. It's like you motherfuckers. I don't trust you motherfuckers. Yeah. He, he he hasn't gotten the letter yet. It's still in the mail. Right. He's thinking about it. He's getting nervous about it. He gets out and he confronts uh, white folks in his car. And he and white playing it cool. He's like, I'm getting ready to leave town right now. That's what I'm in this car to do. Yeah. Right he's now. like he's like, why the fuck are you still here? I thought yeah. you were going to be out of town. Yeah. And if I played a con on you, I'd be long fucking gone. Yeah. He's like, why would I do that? I got the mob after me. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm leaving right now. Yeah. And he's like, he, that's like, ah, oh, you motherfuckers. I don't trust you, but all right. So now they, they, they meet back at the bank and it's closed. Of course. Banking holiday. Right. And they're like, fuck. Why? Because Dot held up fucking white folks. So that's why yep. he was late. And they're like, fuck, man, we're going to have to wait till tomorrow morning to get the, and like folks like, no, we're leaving. Drop the con, man. He's like. Fuck no, I'm not. I, that's ten grand of my money, along with that fucking money's in there. Yeah. Fuck that. So it's looking like you know this great plan is getting spoiled. Uh, you know, it's th- the conversation's turning a little ugly, and then Blue just goes, "You see this guy over here in the white fucking rain jacket? Let's just go con him." Right. He's like, "I found a perfect pigeon," and then we see a guy who's obviously out of town because he's carrying suitcases. And this is why I, I mean, this you would think this scene. Why is this scene in here? I think the reason it's there is to show how addicted to the con Blue is. Okay, okay. Because white folks is talking sense. He's like, I'm going to Chicago. Fuck this shit. Right. I, I don't care about that 10 grand we Live the con another day. And he's like, don't worry about it. Because he's because Blue has gotten away with so much shit in his life. He always thinks I can always talk my way out of a situation. Right. So then we get this scene. They don't... They, they don't even really, because that's, that's I think, like I said, that's the importance of is to show how addicted he is, because they don't even really explain the con. They do. But it's the lost wallet con, where yeah. a guy finds a wallet, and then, like, I don't, I, I, 
I kind of know what they do. It's something like there's like a check or some kind, like a cashier's check that's like like twenty thousand bucks oh, or something. I some thought shit. it was like you want to give them a reward, but you only have a hundred in your wallet, so it's like, hey, can you give me a fifty back? Or well, whatever? yeah, that uh, would yeah, but like but, the, but the thing is, they get five hundred dollars. Yeah, I don't, I don't. I don't know how they knew this guy would have that much money. Because you travel with cash. So yeah, he goes. It, it was it was a weird scene because they go to like a bus station like locker where this guy has his money. Yeah. It was yeah. It was it was a weird setup to this whole scene. And the, he gives him like five hundred dollars. He gives it to white folks, and yeah. white folks is going to do whatever the, whatever the con is. It's the important thing we don't need to know what the con is. They're just, we yeah. just know that they're conning. So white folks goes off to get the money, and this is also to kind of remind us that you know. Because he identif- you know, passes as white, so, some a lot of black people don't see him as a black person. You know, they don't. They well, just I, immediately identify him as an outsider. Right, a guy, think, a guy not to be trusted. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so, yeah, so blue and this this pigeon are waiting in an alley for him to come back with the money, whatever, wherever the con is. And the guy, the the pigeon is like, "All right, I'm gonna kill that motherfucker." <laughs> motherfucker. And he's like, what? what? what he's like, about? he's like, yeah, we're not splitting it three ways. We'll split it between you and me because we're black. We know, it. like, fuck that honky, right? And Blue's like, well, well, that's not, that's not a nice thing to do. I mean, he seems like an okay because, because we, as far as we know, as far as Pigeon knows, Blue and white folk don't know each other, right? So he's trying to talk him out of this. He's like, yeah. no, we'll we'll just talk him out. We'll just. He's like, what? You think because he's white, I'm scared to kill this motherfucker? I don't give a shit. <laughs> he pulls a gun out. And Blue's like, abort, abort, you know, he's just like, uh, yeah, okay. And then they see fucking uh, white folk down like a block down the street coming. Yeah, some like like you said, Blue somehow gives them a signal. White folk know is like, <laughs> oh, shit. Turns the other direction and runs off. It right. just so happens Blue's running in the opposite direction, hops in his car. They both get away. Pigeon is just like, what the fuck just happened? He's like, they just got my fucking money. Like, he realizes he got caught. Yeah. Yeah. So Blue gets in his car, wraps around, picks up white folks again, and they're laughing about it a little bit, but folks are like, uh, I just had a gun pulled <laughs> on me. I don't know how much further I want to go with this shit. Like, I'm I'm ready to jump down. Right. And he's and then he's like, No, baby, we gotta get this fucking money. And fucking folks is like, No, no, I'm out of this. I'm going to Chicago. Yeah. Do what you wanna do. You're a grown man. Yeah, I'm, I'm not, not I'm not doing I'm it. I'm not waiting for the bank to open. But see, that's what I don't understand why Blue wants to wait because he needs white folk to get the signature. Yeah. So I, I guess what it is is Blue's like, I can talk him into it. That's oh, yeah. Probably 100%. what he's thinking. 100%. So now we cut back to Dot. He finally gets that fucking envelope and he sees it was the, this toilet paper. It's cut open. He's like, those motherfuckers, I knew they were going to pull this shit on me. So he goes straight to Blue's apartment. Whew. Bus in. Cleo's fucking some young dude. That's She's like, right. what are you doing in my fucking place? And then we just cut away. We just assume he's going to fucking fuck shit up. He's yeah. pissed. And he happens on White Folk somehow? Dying. Yeah, as he's walking out of Blue's apartment, because I think, I guess Blue and White Folk were going to meet up at the apartment. I, that, just, yeah. I don't know what. Just so happens, they stumble into each other, and he sees him, so he shoots at him. Yeah, and, hits him in the arm. Right. Goes right through. Right, so he will live. So, folks is- But he did do a good job selling it. He did. Hold, held that arm the whole time. Yeah, his the arm was basically dead. Most people would like in movies would be like, "I can use my arm totally." Like he, his arm is probably broken. He probably broke the fucking like humerus and shit. Right. So he <laughs> runs into white folks runs into a crowd, so he can't be shot anymore. Dots get a chase after him. They head into you know like an alley and everything as you do. Right. Uh, runs over train tracks, all this. Right, well, you get a good job where he's selling trying to climb a fucking wall. That's right, yeah. his arm is dead. He can't use it, which is, uh, I like that. That was realistic. The, yeah, after he climbs over that wall, he's running over train tracks and everything. Yeah, there's Old like a wall- subway, and there's, there's uh, he's on one side because there's two tracks, and there's a train coming on the opposite side. So he fucking leaps down, goes across the rails, nick of time, barely gets hit by this car, uh, this subway. Yeah. Gets on it and escapes. So now that Dot's got this juicy information, he's going to head over to visit with Nino uh, at his uncle's funeral. Right. So he's, uh, Dot's going to tell Nino, yeah, this is what it's going to cost. I have, I've got the good details now. He's like, but I'll get them. But I know who did it. Yeah. I'm going to get them because I want that fucking money because he offered him like fucking five grand or something, ten grand to yeah, get yeah. him. And then Nino's like, I don't trust that black guy. Get some of his goons, 
follow that motherfucker. So white white folks, he's going to be looking for for blue and word on the street is do f- fucking white folk and blue are persona non grata. Don't fucking deal with them. Everyone's like, I can't help you because they're yeah. going to everybody they know, and they're like, I don't even fucking know you, white folk. Yeah, and then we follow blue. What's he been up to? Well, we don't know, but he's returning home. Finds this whole place is a fucking mess. Probably assumes Cleo is dead. Probably because yeah. she's gone. So now white folk goes back to his apartment. Or was it the hotel? Where did he I don't go know what there? it was because he he's known. I maybe yeah because this movie only takes place over a couple of days. Yeah. So Sue he gave her a key to his his place. Why is she in his fucking well? Because she's white. She can just say, my boyfriend, like, can you let me in? I bet, th- you know, that's probably what they were trying to You're right. But was this, like, his own apartment? I or think it was holding the presidential suite still? I'm going to go with presidential suite. I think that it, would make more sense. It would make more sense. Because she was never at his place, as far as we know. Because he's from Chicago. Yes. Not from here. So it has right. to be the suite. Yeah. Okay. And like you said, she was just like, cause she's a nice white woman. So, of course, you believe her when she's just like, you know, my boyfriend's at this presidential suite. Can you let me in? Right. So she's wearing like a negligee. That's right. She's ready to fuck again. She wants her face touched and her. She's got the cork. She's corking it. Yeah, he's getting his face. Burning it up. <laughs> but he's got that big old wound. She right. wants to call up the cop, but he's refusing. We can't call the police. Yeah, he's like, if you've been shot by a cop, you don't go to a doctor if you've been shot by a cop. That's true. Because they're going to be at the fucking emergency rooms. That's right. And he's just like, it, it was weird because he's like, take my shirt off. And then they don't do anything. They don't, they don't even do a Sonny Chiba where they pour that fucking champagne on the wound. He just see, We see the wound, and then he puts the shirt back on. And then he chugs some fucking champagne. Yeah. But, you know, Susan is going to be very disappointed to find out that she's not getting fucked today. Because... He starts bearing his soul with her. He starts telling her, I was born from a black woman. Right. My dad was white. I'm a black man. I'm half black. Right. And she's just like, great. Did you see my tits? I want to touch your face and ride your dick. <laughs> and that's why, Susan, you're one of the good ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're such a great woman. You're like, I don't <laughs> care if you're half black. I still want to fuck you. I'm sorry. There are not a lot of good white people in this movie. Sorry. White folks is probably the best white guy in the movie, but he's half black. He's half black. So it's got to go to Susan because yeah. she's the only other person who wants to be around a black man that presents as a white <laughs> yeah. man. Um, yeah, it is kind of just. She's the only person that accepts him for who he is. Him, Her and Blue. I mean, you think about it. Right. All right, so Blue, he's going to be heading over to uh, his favorite bar, which I think I caught. The well, name we of well, the guy. I mean, did we say that like white folks just storms out? He's like, you, yeah, oh like, yeah, you don't you, like you can't understand me. You don't know what I'm going through. And yeah. she, she's like, I want to, and he's just like, fuck you. He's just out. Clearly, what you want is my cock. You don't want my soul. So we he he storms out. But Blue's heading back to his favorite bar because he's got to find Felix. No, As, Dot shows up at Blue's bar looking for him. Well, that happens in a second here. But Blue heads up there first, and he's trying to talk to Felix because he's, you know, in trouble. I'm willing to pay any amount of fucking money, but Felix won't listen. He knows about all the trouble they're in, and then okay, Doc yeah. shows up. Yeah, he's like, I don't know who the fuck you are, dude. And yep. so everybody's turned their back on Blue and White Folk. They are fucked. That's and right. then as he leaves, Dad, Dot shows up. And he spray, he goes up to Melvin. He's like, I want your bitches to go to every bar in this fucking city. And if they see him, let me know. That's right. All right. So white folks is finally going to find Blue at that squalor hotel that he was staying at in the beginning. I guess that's their like permanent like safe house they keep. Yeah. So Blue's going to admit to being just a stupid, greedy old bastard. But is he? Does he? Is he? Is this? Is this? Is, this, is this like fucking rock bottom moment, or is he just conning himself and white folk? That might be up because he's always. Th- it's like he can't help himself. He's addicted to the game. Yeah, I mean, he wants to die the envy of every con man in the world. He wants to be, you know, con man number one. He's like, yeah, if I'm gonna go out, I'm gonna go out in a blaze of glory. Everybody's gonna look and go, Blue was the greatest con man Philadelphia had ever seen. And folks is like, motherfucker, you know, I'll know how you're gonna die. Your face buried in fucking Cleo's peach. <laughs> Don't even pull that shit. And he's like, you know what? You're probably right. So it just so happens that Dot knows about this hotel as well. 
and finds them and well they look out the window and they see dot like in the car yeah and uh, coming out of the car so like they they make they hightail it to the fire escape that's all right they escape so dot can't find him but the mob guys that are following dot spot him that's right so they jump in their caddy they're going this this was a dumb scene because like they're going down an alley and then (laughs) blue's plan is all right i'm gonna step on the brakes and somehow the mafia is like, we can't run into someone's car, so they run into a fucking the wall. They yeah, pull. bad, bad uh, uh, um, set here. Yeah, and then they, then Blue and our boy, white folks, take off. Right. So they're showing up. They kind of got like an alley uh, gospel situation going on here. Well, yeah, we see a preacher out on the street preaching, yep. and we learn like he's as he's talking. He was like a criminal. He was a drug addict at one time, but the Lord saved him. And he's, he, he, I mean, he's really believing it. He's not a con man. Right. He is not. Josephus was his name. Yes, Josephus. And there's some like Black Panther guy goes up. He's like, fuck you and your white God. What the fuck? He's out to beat this dude's ass. And yeah. that's when fucking Blue shows up. He probably has like 50 different kind of like badges, FBI, everything. He pulls out the Philly cop badge. He's like, get the fuck out of here, everybody. Yep. Scatters the whole crowd. And then he has a quick conversation with the preacher who is hesitant to help. Well, because he's like, no, is this one you know when you're cons, Blue? Yeah. Because he knows him. He's like, I'm for real. I'm not conning anymore. I found the Lord. Not to mention, I don't want to help this white guy out. Yeah. And like, if you think he would know, if you knew Blue, he would know white folk. You would think so. So Blue's like, no, no, no. Just, I just need a place to hide out for a little bit. I, let me explain the situation. It's totally explainable. We're not, you know, we didn't do anything wrong. We've been on the fix here. We got somebody working us. It's going as high as the fucking judges. So Joseph is like, well, all right, come into my fucking my my, my uh, street, like uh, like Death Wish Two Street the, yeah. fucking church. <laughs> All right, so Dot, he's at his wits end. He goes back to the mafia. He just, He's like, I'm just going to give you the name and the description of these guys. The guy, they're, they're named Blue and White Folk. No, he's a Blue and Folks. Yeah, Folks. And he's like, they're just two black guys. Just two black guys. And so now we go back to the Josephus' uh, church. Yep. And Blue lays out this fucking ridiculous story. He's like, look, here's what's happening, man. You know, you, you remember Sporty and James... Of course I remember that. Well, here's the thing. They were down south, and they were drunk as fuck, and they just happened to stumble on this white woman with a fucking broken down car. They were going to help him. But as soon you know how white women are. They see a black face, and you know Sporty ain't a good-looking motherfucker. That's right. She freaks out, starts screaming rape immediately. They were in deep shit. They went into hiding. Sporty, he hopped a train. He was like, fuck it. I'm out of here. I'm going back to Philly. But you know James, he's a scary motherfucker, so he stayed down there. And now we need to fucking we need to get these guys out of fucking town, Paris. That's where you go if you're a black man wanted by the fucking police, right? And you know all we need is 10 a.m. tomorrow. And Josephus need- is kind of buying. He's like, how you you have turned over a new leaf, Blue. You're helping out your friends. This That's is fucking right. great. That's right, You're fucking friends who found themselves on the wrong side of trouble. And he's like, well, here's the thing, too. I, I got to go pick up those guys. Yeah. Can I borrow your truck? And, <laughs> and he's just like, of course. You're doing the Lord's work. Doing the Lord's work. So they get in the truck, and Blue's like, we're getting that fucking money, white <laughs> folk. And he's like, what the fuck? I'm bleeding here. Look at this. I can't use my fucking arm. He's like, well, we need to pay for the fucking to fix your arm, don't we? Right. Oh, that's a good point. So now we're going into the next morning. All of our parties are getting into place here. Uh, Folks is, of course, warning Blue. Because was Folks still going to go along with the deal? I guess he had no choice. I yeah, mean, really. He's, you know, so he's, but why do they go back to the bar? I don't know. But Blue goes back to the bar. He sees Cleo is there. Yeah. And he's like, fuck, I thought you were dead. What happened? I guess because he wanted to know about why his place was trashed. I have no, maybe, that's the only well that I guess he one he was he did really really love Cleo so because she treated yeah. him like shit yeah. so maybe he did want to see something yeah you know, check I, on her maybe she's at the bar I, yeah I guess he probably did want to make sure she was okay so that that gives us some reason for him to go back and she reveals that Dot was at the place and trashed the place and he's like and she's like yeah, yeah he let me go because I didn't have anything yep. So Blue heads outside of the bar, and the mobsters are asking for him. But he plays it off because he 
They don't know. Well, what no, he they looks spot like, him right? and he fits the description of okay. Blue. So he's walking out of the bar and they're like, "Hey, Blue!" And he like like turns his head and they're like, "Cause they don't, they're not sure that he's Blue." Okay, they know that's his hangout, right? And they got a description, an older black man. And then they're like, "We got him!" And then fucking the gears are always turning in Blue's head. He's like, "Well." I'm blue, like Johnson or whatever. Oh. Are you talking for? Are you looking for Blue Howard? Okay. And he's like, I know that we get confused. People confuse us all the time, right? And he's like, Well, where the fuck is this Blue Howard guy at? Well, I just saw him like fuck a few hours ago. I mean, he's he's probably on the other side of town. You he's know, that way. So it's looking like he's got the mob off his back, and then Doc comes running out, and he wants his prize. And right. his prize is blue, of course. Right. And the mobsters just turn around and go, oh, black guy? Boom, boom, shoot fucking Dot. Black guy running with a gun. And a cop. And a cop. And so they're they, they feeling threatened. They stood yep. their ground, and then they turn around because Blue's getting ready to run. They shoot Blue. Yep. Folks comes running out, but is uh, unrecognized because... Well, yeah, because the mobsters are like... Is that the partner? No, he said two black guys. Two black guys. So, so whites is just left alone. Yeah. And he's like, Yo, Blue, are you okay? And then Blue just starts rattling off some, like he's in a delirium. He's like, uh, he's like, don't don't mumble, white folk. Don't mumble. Because you mumble, fucking people won't trust you. You got to be clear and concise in whatever you, you, when you're running your game. Yeah. And he's like, and if you fucking, don't ever fucking, so Mark is a stirrer. Fucking run like hell. You can't trust those guys because they're nervous. They're twitchy. And don't catch your Mark coming home from a funeral. It's bad luck. He's just blabbering some shit out. That's right. Talking like he's going to die right there on the street. And he does die. And Cleo just looks, goes back to the bar. <laughs> She's just like, we see uh, white folk over him crying because this is like the only guy that really had his back who fucking accepted him for who he is. It's a cold world. And he just right. lost his one uh, source of warmth. <laughs> And there you go. It ends like that, like you know, like a noir would end. So they're not all fuck, not all black exploitation movies are fucking happy endings. People. I mean, he's a despicable man, so maybe he did deserve to die in the street. Maybe. I mean, it's not like he took that. But there was still, even though he was a despicable man, there was one guy who cared about him, and it was white folk. There was. I know? mean, there's warmth and everything. For I mean, there there's through and through monsters out there. Yeah. I mean, I think he kind of rationalized it. At least I've never hurt anybody, even though who knows how he really hurt people with his con games. Yeah. You know, he didn't physically hurt them. For real. Well, he, he, by way of chain reactions, gave that old man a heart attack. Right. And eventually killed him. Yeah. All right. So next week, the, I think I, I've seen this movie. It's been so long. It's like going to be watching it new again. Cause I don't remember anything about it. But look, we've been to L.A., We've been to Philly this week. I think I think this might be a first for Black Exploitation History Month. I don't think we've had a Detroit set movie yet. No. And there and that's weird how there's not you know, you think about it, most black exploitation movies either happen mostly in LA or New York. There's not a lot of in Detroit and Detroit's a predominantly black fucking town. You think there'd be a lot more yeah. set in Detroit. A couple of the Midwest cities. You know, we have Chicago least gets Philly. representation. Yeah, it gets a little bit. But you think I don't know. You think there'd be more set in Detroit? But sure. we're gonna do one set in Detroit. And when we're we're doing Detroit, we gotta fuck it. We need more. We need. It's not enough that we just have me and Griff. We need one more Detroit or one more Michigander in on this conversation. And when I think about Michigan, I think about a buddy Matt Sosi, the expatriate who unfortunately has to live in Indiana, but his heart <laughs> always belongs in Detroit. So we asked him to come along, and he's got some tales of black exploitation. He's got a Fred Williamson story. He's going to let us uh, in on that he, nice. you know, he interviewed him. Oh wow! So look forward to that next week. It's Detroit Nine Thousand. We're going to point out all the Detroit locations that we recognize for you. Hell yeah! And we're going to have a good old time talking about the Motor City. And uh, I, I imagine we'll spend at least fifteen minutes eating uh, conies. We yes, we are going to eat. You're going to hear it. Listen to us eat them. That's right. And we're going to drink, wash it down with some Fago. I'm going to have some Verners myself, but yeah. we're going to wash it down with that. And we're going to have some Lay's, but I know it's a better made better potato Better made. Chip. Come on, Lay's. So look for that, because I know you, you love when we talk about Detroit people. So <laughs> you're going to hear a lot of it next week. Keep it warm.